one of the less uh, talked about items that you'll see when dealing with 800 uh, OMC stern drives is the intermediate housing. Uh, in my experience, is one of the more important parts. Uh, you commonly hear things about the upper unit and the lower unit going bad with gear sets and whatnot, but there's a lot of things in the intermediate housing that bears some discussion. I've labeled some of these parts um, for a quick discussion of the anatomy of the intermediate housing. And again, this is the 83 Stringer. Uh, it's, this is a C Ray. This is my C Ray. It's been down in the Gulf of Mexico. We pulled it uh, just after Father's Day weekend. Uh, it was down in Biloxi, and obviously uh, there was a, a little bit of an oil problem there. Now, uh, let me just uh, extract some of these labels and give a brief overview of the uh, anatomy of this. Um, of course, this is called the intermediate housing. Um, you'll find your exhaust in here. Uh, this needs to be cleaned up again. It was in salt water for a couple of years, and we pulled it out. A lot of uh, a lot of excess scraping and, and uh, a little bit of sanding is going to need need to happen. Your uh, my I've got a power steering. That's my power steering gear. Um, your ball gear. Your uh, drive always needs to be down in the uh, lowest position. If you're uh, curious where your uh, cable goes in, that's the notorious cable right there. And by uh, screwing this half inch screw and putting that latch over it, that kind of helps hold it down. You can see some of the blue around here. I always use a good dose of uh, silicon around it because that's a source of contention for water leaks. Uh, your seawater pump actually enters uh, right here. You can see the label, labeled seawater. Uh, good place to uh, check your oil is right here should be eye level, should be able to see it. And to fill it up, fill from the bottom. We fill up from right there till we can see it up here. Um, of course, there's your trunnions. It's where you rock back and forth when you lift your outdrive. Now, let's get into uh, the tilt gear for just a moment. Um, there's the gear itself. You're probably familiar with that. And if you look at uh, another video that I made recently, you'll see the insides of the clutch uh, mechanisms and how this all sits in there and how it goes on. And um, here's a brief explanation of how it works. Since I've got my boot off, you'll see back in here where my hand is, this is a uh, the motor, the tilt drive motor. It engages through a hammer coupling, uh, gives it about, oh, a half a second of spin up, rotates about 90 degrees, engages this uh, worm tilt gear, hits it pretty hard, spins a gear in there, which spins your clutch pack, and your clutch pack, and of course that's the bearing for it right there, you can remove that and access uh, what you need to access in here if you ever are working on it um, by removing these three and doing a light tap right up in here. And I've got to replace uh, a few of the, this will come up on the next video, but I've got to replace a few of the uh, seals that are in here and secure this up a little bit. Going to pack it with grease. It's got oil in it right now, but it's best, a uh, better standard procedure is probably to pack it with grease. And I've got my small drip right here where most people will see, and I'm actually missing a spacer there. Of course, I've known about the spacer being miss, missing since the last time that I had it out, which was, uh, oh, we pulled it approximately two months ago. Um, and there's four bolts that'll bolt in to hold this on. Not too terribly tight here. If you put it on too terribly tight, you bind this. Binding this doesn't help you a bit. Draining it, you've got a nice little screw uh, right down here to drain it. And the gasket set will be coming up shortly. I'll explain the gasketry and the electronics of firing this tilt motor inside. It's a relay-based system. Gives some people some difficulty. It needs to be really, really cleaned.